World-class innovators aren't afraid of thinking boldly. You know, I think for a lot of us, sometimes we think too small in terms of what we can do, in terms of what we can accomplish, in terms of the change that we can achieve. It was kind of fascinating. In 2005, I was brought over to Stuttgart, Germany by Daimler Chrysler. Daimler Chrysler, the newly merged entity of Chrysler and Mercedes-Benz. And it was a small meeting to talk about the auto industry of the year 2015. Ten executives from either side of the organization, ten executives from Mercedes and ten executives from Chrysler. And I was brought in as the outside futurist, provocateur, provide some innovative thinking in terms of you know, what might be happening. We spent the entire first morning talking about what the auto industry might look like in the year 2015. And part of the discussion was, well, who will be the competitors in 2015? And they sat there, you know, and they said, well, it's going to be BMW, it's going to be Ford, it's going to be GM, it's going to be all of the traditional existing manufacturers. They weren't thinking big enough. You know, and I finally got to the point about an hour and a half in, and I said, you know, maybe I have it all wrong. Maybe there's so much change going on in the world today in terms of innovation and people thinking differently that maybe by 2015, 2020, maybe your competitor, it might be Google. And they stopped and they looked at me and I said, here's how, here's how it could work. I said, Google could, you know, right now, this was right when, you know, Google Maps was emerging for the first period of time. We could have a couple of engineers sitting at Google headquarters right now. And they're looking at Google Maps and they're going, this is really cool. We should build a car around this. We could build a really cool car around this navigation system. How are we going to do that, Google says. Well, Google says, we're not going to do it on our own. In the future, it's all based about partnerships. It's all about relying on partners to help you get things done. We are simply going to line up with an existing auto manufacturer in China, in Brazil, in Tennessee. We're simply going to con contract for them to build the car on our behalf. We're all about new business models, new ways of doing things. So we're not going to have a car dealership network. We're going to sell the car online. More people are buying things online. We'll simply sell the car online. Nobody likes auto dealers, right? So we'll sell it online. We're going to sell it as a beta a year in advance because everything we do is as, you know, as a beta. We're all about logistics. We're all about partnerships. We're all about using partners to help us get things done. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up a contract with FedEx and FedEx is going to deliver the car in a box. And because we're Google and we understand marketing, when the car is delivered to your driveway, it's going to come with a party in a box. It's going to have Google Car hats and Google Car wine, Google Car streamers. It's, it's, you know, you're going to be the coolest person in the neighborhood because you have the Google Car. I am sitting there with 20 senior executives of what was once the largest car manufacturing company in the world, and I'm talking to them about the Google Car. What do you think is going through their mind? That's, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. That's the dumbest idea I ever heard. You think, you think about that. And you think about the reality of what is occurring today with supercar manufacturing. You think about the reality of what is occurring. Tesla Motors built out in California. You know, where the two equity founders are the primary owners of Google. You think about McLaren Motors. You think about the whole trend which is occurring where we're witnessing small manufacturers building premium quality products and selling them to niche markets. You think about the trends which are occurring in which people with big, bold ideas are thinking differently about what they can accomplish in the future. You know, last night, one of my uh, closing comments, talking about the future of manufacturing and talking about some of the trends which are going to drive you forward into the future, which I think, you know, probably caused some consternation among the crowd, was the whole trend towards 3D printing. You know, we're already seeing 3D printing from a, from a theoretical perspective. We're already seeing 3D printing from the perspective of composite products, composite plastics. And you think, you think about what is occurring here, where folks are sitting back and they're saying, you know, we're going to see an inevitable shift towards a world of additive manufacturing, where we're building things on an additive basis rather than a subtractive basis, based on cutting, drilling, and bashing metal. And some of you can sit back and think, you know, oh my God, you know, this is not good. The entire foundation of my industry, the entire foundation of my country is based on subtractive manufacturing. But we have an undeniable trend which is underway. World-class innovators think boldly. They don't discount the idea of the Google car. They don't discount the rate of change which might occur 
which could transform industries. Next wave digital solutions are driving huge industry change.